Hello garden lovers, I hope you're well. Welcome to my channel and uh, my garden renovation. And here we have a newly finished garden. Before I used to have this carport here and I got rid of that. And um, also I got rid of this mound. You can see where this uh, old rubble and soil, where the soil level used to be here. And I got rid of all of this and turned it into a turning circle because I do live on the main road. And here they've made a small flower bed for me. And this is uh, some leftover bits where they created this wall so you don't get this ugly loose soil very uh, Fred Flintstone like. So here's my garden all finished. Well the garden's never really finished but the uh, the hard landscaping is. Garden's always always ongoing, changing, ever changing. So this bit here, my turning circle, was not built by the original builders. The original builders, uh, I, I did have a patio here, but it was actually poorly laid. Uh, some of the slabs were loose even before they left and they were very hard to communicate with. And then uh, a family friend recommended these uh, second set of builders, which were amazing. You know, they, they, were, they were very thoughtful, considerate, and uh, they've given me everything that I've wanted and more. So this is my turning circle. Of course the budget just got bigger and bigger, which I didn't anticipate, but I did get uh, a lot of help from a Turkish man called uh, Tufan Erjan Bijik. I think I pronounced that right. So now I do have the garden that I've always wanted and a turning circle for my car, which I think is very, very useful because uh, to come out of the main road makes it a lot more safe. Okay, we are going to look at some lovely blooms at the moment. This one is a Cordes Rose from the Parfuma collection. And this is one of its newest introductions. This is Porcelain Parfuma beautiful cool cool pink with lighter edgings and a really really lovely smell as you can see the second flush is so very very bushy very healthy and lots and lots of buds really really lovely variety another one here which is very beautiful and on the second flush Beautiful. This is raspberry perfumer. Slight ruffling of the of the uh, petals, and uh, different colours in there as well. Shades of pink and magenta, I think. Very very lovely, and lots of uh, buds coming through there. This one is spicy perfumer. A nice. Uh, second flush but not no blooms yet and here I have this whole bed of manure that I've uh, picked up from a local stables when I borrowed the builders van and I'm just going to distribute that all over the garden lovely lovely oil, um, soil conditioner okay let's swing round and have a look at this year's introduction from David Austin. This is Emma Bridgewater. The blooms on the second flush is very, very tiny, but they're like little, little, little tiny blooms. The flowers are very, very different from, well, a lot smaller from the first flush. Well, they weren't big anyway, but these are quite small very very small rosettes but quite a lot of them and the 
bush is super healthy, as you can see. Lovely, dainty, dainty buds. Well, there were some casualties during the building work. This one I managed to rescue and put in this uh, bucket for the time being. It looks like it's doing okay. This one is called the Country Parsons, one of the prickliest of the David Austins. This one is a lucky one I managed to rescue. I did lose quite a few plants. One that I've lost, which I'm quite sad about, is the uh, Jubilee Celebration cutting, which I was training to a standard. I remember putting it aside and um, me and my husband was moving some pots around and the uh, standard, well, the baby standard was just behind him. And I remember his hand slipped and he tumbled backwards and fell over. And the first thing I checked on was the cutting because I didn't want him to crush it. It was quite fragile. So I checked on the cutting before I checked on my husband. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, I've lost it now. I don't know where it is. This one is um, Lady of Shalott. Look how beautiful this is. It stood up to the weather quite well. A little bit uh, dried around the edges. We have had a lot of rain and wind and it's still looking quite good. Okay, I'm gonna go for a little walkabout around my, my garden with the newly laid paths. You can see all these paths have rounded edges. And there was a lot of cutting and a lot of measuring. So it's much more labor intensive than just a plain straight path. So, these builders are really, really good. I'm going to show you my red border. Not a lot of red going on in here. Although these flocks, not quite red, but they were here before I decided this was going to be a red border. These are uh, flocks, very, very nice late summer perennial and very uh, long lasting blooms. As is with these uh, Japanese anemones, they're very easy to grow, but you have to be careful which variety you pick. Um, the white ones are quite vigorous, but not as vigorous as I, I think was called the, uh, that's a slightly bigger version of this one. I think it's called September Charm. That's a very, very thuggish kind of plant. But this one's not too bad. You can still sort of like thin it out if you, if you wanted to. Growing with that is lovely climbing rose from Cordes. This is a Florentina, a very vibrant, vibrant color. Lovely, lovely, intense, very glossy, dark green foliage and uh, intense colors of this uh, new, new foliage, new leaves. Emerging leaves are very, very red and bronzy like. I have a new seating area which I could admire all my plants from and I could actually be totally immersed in them. This is a, a really, really lovely seating area where I could hide away from everybody. And this would be my new flower bed. And it's a work in progress, of course. Um, this will be mainly pinks and purples, I think. There is a, a standard rose here, which I turned into a standard. This is uh, this is Shandos Beauty, a very healthy, vigorous plant and uh, really good. This is, must be its third flush. And I had this very, very long cane early in the summer. And once it's flowered, I've pruned it. And how look, look how well it's responded to pruning. So I wasn't aware that I had a cane here growing from the side, as you can see there. And I don't actually have the heart to take it out yet. So I'll see if I have any flowers, but to maintain this uh, tree-like shape, I think I will have to take it out at some point. But I'm actually very, very pleased that my Shandos beauty tree has turned into a lovely lollipop shape.
gorgeous. These asters here are fantastic. Very, very good value for money plant. Now I bought a plant like for four pounds uh, quite a few years ago, probably about six years ago when I first moved in. And this plant has probably multiplied itself by 10 times already. I mean, I have uh, had them dotted around the garden. Very easy to grow and very, very good value for money. Next to that is a very lovely rose, one of the most famous ones, I think. This is Summer Romance, also called Lovely Perfuma, from the uh, Perfuma Cordes collection. Look at the amount of buds on this. Very, very lovely rose. Very lovely rose. And behind that, I think I need to move this one because I really do love smelling it. This is called... Um, Royal Perfumer, uh, also called Dark Desire from the Perfumer collection. Really deep colour rose. I think I shall move this to the red border uh, later on because I can't reach it. It's right in the middle of this uh, huge, huge border. Really lovely. I'm going to show you, uh, sh turn you around and show you this lovely dahlia. It wasn't quite in bloom last time, but look at that. Lovely, lovely, huge, big blooms. Lovely. Grown with this uh, Salvia Almestad, another lovely perennial. And also, this is like a, another bed in progress. Okay, I'm going to finish this video by taking a look at these two amazing roses. Now this one has taken me by surprise. This is Olivia Rose Austin and I previously didn't have such high um, opinions of this. I felt though the blooms like drooped like this one here and um, it did, because it didn't have fragrance I didn't rate it so highly but all that has changed. Now this is a cutting. This is a cutting from uh, from my brother's garden because I didn't have Olivia and I wanted it. Uh, I did um, buy an adult plant and it is very very bushy right now but let me show you why I've uh, what's changed my mind. Look at that. Just look at that and just follow it. Two buds and leaves hanging on on a tiny bit of stem how amazing is this and now this was damaged during the building works but it's still growing very beautifully wow look at this now sometimes you can tell um, how vigorous uh, David Austin roses or roses in general by how well the cuttings grow I mean I've never had a cutting from Lady Emma Hamilton or Munstead Wood which I really, really like, and they are discontinued. It's very, very difficult to take cuttings from them because they're just not very vigorous roses. But this one here, how amazing is that? I'm just so thrilled uh, at how, how strong and resilient this rose is. So this one has gone right up in the rankings, in my opinion. And this one here is, quite open but you can see you can see it oh, very very windy today you can see how how lovely it is and well it's not quite it's reaching its full potential but what is so amazing is check this out 2.99 I got this rose in the sale it didn't have blooms and it was looking quite sad but how it's recovered bargain of the year 2.99 this is oh i forgot to tell you what brand what brand and uh, make this is this is my first fino gino rose fino gino is a serbian ah, a serbian and uh, also from netherlands serbia serbian and netherlands um 
company and they do do um, edible roses. So this is my first Fino Gino and also my first edible rose. Now I have to think about what I'm going to do with this rose I and mean, put it in salads or put it in jam. I'm not a great cook but uh, I might just taste it just the petals just off like that. Uh, it may be in my next video maybe we'll do a taste together. So this is my first Fino Gino. This is called the Theo Cleavers. That's it, Theo Cleavers. Cole Clevers. Not sure. So Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.